So as with most of the English-speaking world, Tarantino is one of my favorite directors. I know everybody loves Pulp Fiction, and I also love Pulp Fiction, and you know, I think Reservoir Dogs is amazing, but Inglorious Bastards for me is really his body of work that translates the best. For me, Inglorious Bastards does everything that Tarantino does the best, the best. But with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, it's, it's just a very different film overall for Tarantino. So as per usual, the first little bit of this, we are not gonna have any spoilers, and then towards the end, I will very clearly outline when I'm gonna talk about something a little bit more specific, so if you wanna click off, then you can. But let's get into it. So overall, this movie definitely feels like, it's, it's just a real love story to the Hollywood and the film industry and the world that Quentin Tarantino loves so much. And while everybody really wants to focus in on the Manson aspect of this, even though it's been months of him saying that it's just kind of coinciding with the same time, and while the Manson murders were not the main point, it was still handled in terms of a changed history story significantly better than The Haunting of Sharon Tate, which if you have no idea what I'm talking about, check out this video that I made about it because it's wild and funny. And that's not the central focus. A lot of people want to make it the central focus when in reality it is really just kind of this entire thing with DiCaprio's character Rick Dalton coming to the realization of his own obsolescence, transitioning out of a really top television star trying to make it into the Hollywood industry and then kind of realizing that he's on the decline, which is kind of really significant for just the transition of Hollywood at the time and the, the dying off of that like traditional, you know, 50s, 60s leading man. And in terms of that aspect of the film, it's handled fantastically. I think this is one of DiCaprio's best performances, definitely better than The Revenant. I don't see him necessarily getting nominated for this just where, you know, he'd been. It, it, honestly, I feel like they gave Leo the Academy Award for The Revenant because they didn't give it to him for Wolf of Wall Street. And I think that's kind of what happened here. I would like to see him get a nod. Brad Pitt was also fantastic, but the vulnerability that DiCaprio brought to, brought to this character is, is kind of different than what you're used to in a Tarantino film, especially the Tarantino films that kind of jump around from individual stories. And in that sense, they, they really do give DiCaprio that breathing time more so than you'd get in a character in something like Pulp Fiction or in something like Inglorious Bastards. He brings a real genuine vulnerability to the role that isn't really that common in a Tarantino movie and he's I feel like he's really allowed to explore it. He plays the character just normally being himself versus how he plays the character when the character is acting is, is just really, really spectacular and all the insecurities within him and that, that strive to work and be better uh, it, it's just, it was actually really nice to see in a Tarantino movie. And while he does have strong characters, I would never say that, that Tarantino isn't someone who crafts strong characters. I really do think he let this character breathe more uh, than, it, than is common. Now, when I got out of it last night, there was something that I immediately noticed. Uh, it's a different speed for Tarantino. Uh, but the scenes that, that shine are, are really, really great, but it doesn't have that, that snappy, flawless flow that I'm kind of used to from a lot of Tarantino movies, which I do think, unfortunately, that comes down to the lack of Sally being present as an editor. It was something that I definitely noticed in Hateful Eight. And then this, for, for a large portion of the movie, didn't even necessarily feel it felt like a Tarantino movie, but it was just lacking a lot of the things that when people immediately think of Tarantino, they, they would go to. So I do think it might've been able to benefit from just some, some rearranging, maybe some different editing, um, but there, there's no denying that it's beautiful and that the concepts and the thoughts and the, the things that were explored in the film were really fascinating to me and I genuinely enjoyed it. So I ended up not recording this last night after I finished watching the movie because I did want to kind of sit on it for a bit and waking up this morning, I want to see this again. So I was supposed to see it uh, with Jen last night. She wasn't able to make it. So I just went alone and uh, we finally got Midsummer. So I had ended up having to drive to like where my parents live to go see, which is like two hours away to see Midsummer in a different theater uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, and now we're suddenly randomly getting it tonight. So she was like, okay, well, let's see Midsummer on Friday. And then next week we'll go see uh, Once Upon a Time again. So I can, I can catch that. But now I kind of want to be like, can we just see Once Upon a Time in Hollywood again? Even though I really also want to see Midsummer again, I feel very conflicted. So I think just the fact that I, that I want to see it again so quickly does speak volumes for it. I feel like when you go into a movie that when you know who directs it and you kind of expect their style or something from them, it can actually sometimes ruin the experience for you because you're always just kind of waiting for something. Even though it, you know, it still had a lot of the same you know, Tarantino 
slice of life. The, the moments are the movie. It doesn't have to always be super plot heavy. It's just watching a character, uh, you know, migrate through through life in this like slice of life buddy situation. Just knowing that it's Tarantino does already leave you with expectations. So now that I at least know what this movie is, I feel like seeing it a second time will let me, you know, really enjoy some of the smaller moments. Uh, just really enjoy uh, the, the direction that the characters went with the acting. Uh, you know, I, I did think uh, Robbie did a great job with the Sharon Tate character, but as mentioned, she's not the central focus of the film. So I don't really know why a lot of journalists were getting hung up on that. Well, I just reject your hypotheses. Uh, it's almost like they wanted to make it more about the Manson murders than it was. The Manson situation just made an excellent backdrop because that did really mark a major transition in, in Hollywood, both in the sense that it closed out the 60s and in the sense that it kind of irreparably changed the landscape. I know I've been talking a lot about Leo, but Brad Pitt did a really great job with this character. The character was just genuinely enjoyable. It did kind of remind me a lot of his character in Inglorious Bastards, which again, there's nothing nothing wrong with that but he's just always a joy to have on screen especially in a tarantino movie it's always really nice to see and uh with what she had to work with margot robbie did a great job with sharon tate she just brought a really nice like likable energy vibrant uh portrayal to a character that according to Sharon Tate's sister was was very accurate and very well done to to the character. But again, all that being said, is it is definitely one of his more slow burn films. I would say it's probably most comparable to Jackie Brown. I did enjoy this more than Jackie Brown, but in terms of what films of his I can compare it to, I would probably have to go with that one. And I forgot to mention that this movie was actually really funny. I'm talking about how the, these really serious, vulnerable performances from Leo, but there's a lot of comedy in that vulnerability and how it's exuded. Really, really great use of comedy here. So don't go into it thinking it's just gonna be a, a downer. It, it was really enjoyable from that standpoint as well. Oh, also there was just like great little moments of added like ads right from the 60s. Uh, just really nice little things like that, that as they're navigating through, they, they're they listening. It's almost really is just like being back in the 60s. That was something that I immediately, not that I was ever in the 60s, but that's something that I immediately thought of when I was watching this movie. Sometimes you have movies that say they're set back in the day and there's just nothing about it that makes me feel like it actually is. If somebody said, yeah, that's happening right now, I'd be like, okay, I can believe that that's happening right now. But Tarantino manages to, to bring an aesthetic to his films that seems to suit the era while still looking incredibly great, incredibly new and fresh and vibrant. But then I can still say, yes, this happened, this this feels like a movie in the 60s. Not just because of what they're wearing, but I just feel like I'm in the 60s just because of, of everything that's being done with the color grading, to the filming, to every little detail uh, like that, which you can't always say for films. So I do wanna give a great nod in that direction. And then if you couldn't just get it from the aesthetic there, you are constantly being realistically barraged with things from like television to news ads to radio ads. It was really quite special. Currently, I don't think it's one of his best works, but it does make me want to get right back out to the theater and see it again, which is which is always a good sign uh, with movies if it's left some kind of mark on you that makes you want to revisit it, go back to it, experience it again. I think that that's not something that can be understated. Uh, it might not hit the mark with everyone, but uh, I think it's at least worth the watch, even if just for Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt's characters. Again, this is the spoiler area, or at least like the more spoilery. It's the way that it is. There's nothing really in this movie that is that I can super spoiler because it is just more the experience of what the characters are going through that is the, the film. So I don't think there's anything I can say that really ruins it. But again, this is the more spoilery talk. So if you don't want that, click off now. So yeah, like I mentioned earlier, basically the almost entire runtime of this movie up until the last act, the very last act could almost have been like, wow, this is the most like toned down Tarantino movie I've ever seen. Like this is really, it's like, I was like, man, Hateful Eight went so over the line and this is just really much more reserved. Then the last act happens and you're like, yeah, this is the most Tarantino that I could imagine being packed into five minutes. But yeah, like I mentioned, this movie was, it was just so funny and how a lot of it was executed and uh, for, for dancing around some really serious issues, they, you know, he, he really nailed it. You know, Tarantino does this, you know, altered history, flipped, history uh, a lot and he does it really well in my opinion. I think, uh, like I said, Inglorious Bastards is my favorite thing that he's done 
and uh, I love how he, he danced around real characters with fictional characters with a total kind of like re, you know, changing of, of historical event in that sense. And he does the, the same thing here. Uh, so as I mentioned, the, the Manson murders are kind of the backdrop because, you know, the Polanski residence is like immediately next to Rick Dalton's house. And they've got the gates kind of blocking it off. Uh, and he kind of has this whole thing about how, you know, maybe one day he'll be invited up to the Polanski house and, you know, he'll be in some amazing movie there. And seeing Sharon Tate specifically, while a lot of, like I said, people wanted to like overstate her importance. I would say she was the most, like the third most focused on character in the movie, but it almost was like she acted as kind of like the opposite of Rick. You got Rick, who was a really popular television star, decided he wanted to try to leverage that into a movie career, which kind of ruined the, the end of the television show, which he feels people don't forgive him for, and then he's unintentionally being typecast into a certain type of character. In the film world, he's being used as the heavy, which is always like the bad guys uh, in movies, and him kind of coming to that realization that he's basically being used to prop up the careers of younger and better actors, whereas you then have Sharon Tate, who is just so excited to be walking by a theater playing The Wrecking Crew and open about the fact that she kind of transitioned into the adult world of cinema and how she was just still so excited to see herself on screen and to have been a part of something and just genuinely enjoyed the reaction of, uh, of the people around her enjoying the movie, which was just kind of like staunchly the opposite of the situation that Rick Dalton finds himself in, where he can't enjoy his old work. And even when people are praising him for his old work, he's apologizing for them having seen it, which was, it was just a really, I really do feel like she was just kind of there to have this, to be the opposite coin of that, to be the opposite ideology of like your time in Hollywood. I really loved the the moment where, you know, he messes up on set one day and then really just hones it in, doesn't drink and says he's gonna knock it out of the park. And then, you know, it's at the moment in the trailer where the little girl's just so impressed by the acting, just such a character triumph there. I really, it's like little moments like that that, that really made the movie and that's what the movie is about. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, uh, definitely worth the watch. It was really enjoyable. Uh, might, again, might not hit every note for every person, but just based on the fact that I want to see it again so immediately after having watched it, I think bodes really well for it. Maybe down the road I'll do a little bit of a deeper dive into it. That is something that I want to get back to with, with, uh, with my film style content, but uh, let me know if you guys saw the movie, if you enjoyed the movie, if not, why not? If so, if so, if you liked it a lot more than I did, let me know why you think down below. So thank you all so much for watching. Have a fantastic day and we'll catch you all later.